Hey, what's up everybody? Today I just wanted to do a quick tutorial on a topic that's really quite basic that many of you may be familiar with, but when I quiz sophomores, juniors, and seniors on this topic, it's amazing how many of them get it wrong. And part of that is because it's something you don't usually think about until it matters and then it matters. And that topic is argument passing. <laughs> So to introduce the topic, let's look at an example. So here in this example, I have a main function down here. I have two variables that are integers, x and y. We'll set them to values. And then say that I have some function I want to call, and I'm going to pass x and y as arguments into this function. Let's just define this. And then let's do something that's a little strange, and let's modify the arguments that were passed in inside that function. Now at this point, I want you to just pause and think about what's going on. What's going to happen here in this program if I run it? Please don't compile it. Please don't run it yet. Just in your mind, try to think through what you think is going to happen. Now, I recently asked this question to a class full of juniors and seniors, and almost half of them got it wrong. And typically, there's a couple different ways you think this might turn out. Some of you will predict that the values will stay the same, that the, they will not actually be changed by the function. Some of you will predict that they will be changed, that the one will be incremented and the other will be decremented. And then some of you will actually think that the locals and the globals are handled different and they're not. I just threw that in to try to mess you up. Okay, so let's compile the code and let's run it and let's see what happens. Sure enough, the arguments don't change. The values don't change. And the reason is, is that C uses pass by value semantics. Now what this means is that when I pass an argument, when I pass X or pass Y to a function, what gets passed is the value of that variable. So it doesn't actually pass X or it doesn't actually pass Y. Those variables themselves are not actually passed to the function. They're not put on the stack. What is put on the stack is a copy of the value of those variables and that copy is what we just changed. So we incremented a copy and we decremented a copy, but once we return from this function, those copies get thrown away. Those copies don't exist anymore. They were local to the function call. And so when we jump back into main, X and Y still have their original values. Now this style of argument passing is called pass by value. Sometimes you could call it pass by copy if it helps you remember it. But what if I did actually want to be able to change the value of one of these arguments that were passed in? Well, what I would need to do is pass a reference or in C we call these pointers to one of those variables. So if I pass in a pointer to one of the variables instead, now I'm not passing passing a copy of its value, I'm passing in a copy of its address, and then if I dereference that address, now I'm actually accessing the actual variable, the X or the Y that was passed in. Now I can actually change what is at that address in memory, and so if I make that change, we compile it and we run it, you can see that the value is actually changed. So this gives you two different ways to approach this. This latter is called pass by reference, and even though I mentioned C, Java, most, most of your modern programming languages use pass by value semantics. If you pass in a pointer or a reference, then you get pass by reference and you, you can actually change what that reference refers to. And so that's it for today. I just wanted to give this really quick overview. It's a little refresher, a brush up for those that may have heard this before but may have forgotten. And maybe this is new, maybe you've never seen this before. And hopefully it saves you some pain and suffering on a future project. And until next time, I'll see you later.